Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome back to the Dice Towers. We take a look at my favorite games from various board game publishers. Today we're taking a look at Repos Production. Now Repos Production, uh, they were known for a while. They had uh, Belgians wearing sombreros. That was their shtick at conventions. You could always find them. They were silly. Their initial games were silly. Then they had a bona fide hit come out, a uh, hit that swept the world with awards, Seven Wonders. Um, and now we look forward to seeing what their games are all the time. These are my 10 favorite Repos production games, starting from number 10. Number 10 is Terror in Meeple City. It was originally called Rampage, uh, but they had to change the name because, well, the video game, I'm sure. Terror in Meeple City is a uh, game where you are monsters moving around, smashing buildings down by flicking things at them, by blowing on them, and by dropping things on them. Maybe not the best game to play these days, but it is fun. It is kind of a shtick of a game, but... If you like knocking things over and being a giant monster, this game is for you. Number nine is City of Horror. City of Horror was the sequel to Mall of Horror, and I think I might like the theme of Mall of Horror a lot better, actually, being stuck in a mall. But in this one, you're stuck in a city, and zombies are coming to eat everybody. And you each, uh, each player owns a group of survivors that you are trying to keep alive. The problem is the zombies are going to get in at various points, and then you need to basically leave somebody to the zombies. You vote on that. Um, it's a pretty vicious, mean game, mean-spirited game, which occasionally I like that sort of thing, and it's fun in City of Horror. Number eight is their newest party game. So Repos definitely has some solid, good party games. And this one is So Clover, which is barely a game. Not the only game on this list that's like that. But So Clover, in which you are putting down square cards onto a clover. And, well, they're already placed there. And you write words down. People have to kind of puzzle out how these cards fit on here to match the words. It's like Password, but in a cooperative sense and a little bit less thinky. Very, very fun. Number seven is When I Dream. When I Dream is a game about dreaming with Dixit style cards and one person has a one of those sleep pads over their eyes. Everyone else is giving them clues. There might be a word, tiger. We're going around a table giving you one word clues until you guess correctly. The problem? Some people are giving you incorrect clues because they want you to guess incorrectly. Uh, you don't want to be too obvious about that because I'll just stop listening to you after a while. It's a fascinating, interesting party game, When I Dream. Number six is Concept. This is the other one I mentioned that's barely a game. Concept is basically sort of like a 20 question style thing, but what you're doing is you're putting cubes out on this board that has all kinds of ideas and shapes and pictures. And by putting these cubes out, people are trying to guess something. It's very neat to see and play for the first time. And it is sort of an activity. We've done it even live here on the channel. I find it to be very fun and interesting concept. Number five is Cash and Guns. And I'm referring to the newest version of this. Cash and Guns, which is essentially the end of a Tarantino movie where everyone's pointing guns at each other. You've just robbed a place. And you're all pointing guns at each at the different players, fake guns each turn. And then you have to decide whether someone's bluffing or they actually have a bullet in the chamber. And then you split up a bunch of loot for the people who remain standing each round. It's silly. It's fast. It's fun. It's not for all groups, obviously, with the theme. But people who really like it, I've had this one go over very, very well. Number four, this is the last party game we're talking about, and that is Just One. Just One, one of the simplest but best party games ever designed. I've never seen this one. This is a party game I've had 100% success rate with, and that's with anybody, gamer or non-gamer, where you, uh, everyone sees a word except one person. They all, everyone writes a clue down. You show each other your clues. If you wrote the same clue as someone else, it's erased. The person opens their eyes. They have to guess the word based on the clues they still see. Fun, cooperative. You can jump in and out of the game. Really cool. Just one. Number three is the game that changed the course of Repo's games, and that is Seven Wonders. Now, I will say I didn't want to fill this uh, list up with Seven Wonders game. Seven Wonders Architects, which is a, a, a smaller, quicker version, might have made it down in the bottom, but Seven Wonders um, 
which is a drafting game, can play up to seven players, plays quickly, is a game I liked when I first played it, but has grown on me. There are, I believe, four different expansions for the game, not counting little promos and other civilizations. And I could, I like some of them. I think some of them are better than others, but I can play with a mix of them or some of them or none of them. I'm finding that either way, Seven Wonders really holds up and is a lot of fun. Number two, Seven Wonders Duel. I said I didn't want to flood this list of Seven Wonders, but frankly, the two-player Seven Wonders, which most people like better than Seven Wonders, it lets you draft as a two-player game. It has three different ways to victory, um, a little bit similar to Seven Wonders, but feels like a very different game. As a nice tug of war back and forth and just plays so well. One of the highest rated games in the world. A lot of people love it, and I am one of them. And finally, number one is Ghost Stories. Now, Ghost Stories was remade with a new theme recently, which I have not played a fantasy theme, but the original Ghost Stories is the original, the OG of hard cooperative games. Although nowadays when I play it, I think, huh, this isn't as hard as many modern games. It's not as hard as I once thought. I have beat this game. But this idea of you being a bunch of monks defending a village against these very horrific ghosts that are marching in, it's simple, it's fun, you, there's dice rolling in it, giving me a bit of luck feeling to it. There is luck in the game, but there's, there's a lot of strategy, a lot of interesting ideas. Comes with two expansions. I think the White Moon expansion is better than the Black Stories expansion. Um, in fact, it's an amazing expansion, but even without the expansions, I think the game itself is a lot of fun. So, Ghost Stories, fantastic game. My favorite repost production game. What are your favorite games from Repos or your favorite game? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, though, I'm Tom Bass, and you've been watching my 10 favorite games from Repos Productions here on the Dice Tower.